Many years ago, before the dams were put in the Columbia River, the salmon would make their way up to a lot of the tributaries, including this river here, the Slocan River, which we're going to be fishing today. It was prolific back then, unfortunately it's not today. A little later on in the show, we're going to have Les Brazier with us. Les is working on one of the groups to try and enhance the fishery here. Well, it's the beginning of March. We get to fish this between March and April. That's the only window of opportunity left today, and you have to target whitefish. So whitefish on the Slocan River. That's today, as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Well, that sign kind of says it all. You know, we get a chance to fish some new water today. And for a new species. We're actually going to be going after some whitefish today. Yeah, it should be really interesting. We're on the Slocan River, which is really near our hometown of Trail, British Columbia. Yeah. And it's a type of fishery that I think would be really good as a catch and release fishery because we're fly fishermen, we like yeah. that. The locals here though, they want to be able to harvest the fish out of it. Yeah. And the thing is the river's closed to fishing as the sign says, but it's open from March 1st to April 15th for, for white, white fish. fish. So exactly. we're actually going out fishing for some white fish. We'll yeah. probably end up catching a couple of rainbow today yeah. and see what it's like. So a little bit controversial river, but we at least get a chance to fish it today. Yeah, and that's a big opportunity for fly fishing. You know, when a river is closed and it's only open for one species, you still get to go after. If you do catch the other species in there, you release them unharmed. Again, we're using barbless hooks, catch and release only. It's perfect. So how are we going to go after whitefish today? Uh, nymphing. I think nymphing is the best way. Maybe a little later on, whitefish are known to come up for a dry fly. We'll try yeah. some dry fly later on, but mainly nymphing today. Seen some caddis moving around, so we exactly. might even get a caddis hassle. Yeah. It's early. It's early oh. April. That'll be pretty special. Looking forward to a beautiful river. Yeah. Well, don't go away. We'll be right back with the Slocan River. Well, what I did is I started off with that uh, North Fork Special. It's a stonefly nymph, small stonefly. And we ran through a couple of beautiful runs up there and had no luck. So what I'm doing is I'm going to change it to a mayfly nymph. There's a lot of mayfly nymphs in the water and there's also a bunch of caddis. A little, lot of uh, caddis. Little, the old tent building caddis or yep. whatever they call them. Well, you know, I've seen lots of mayflies floating down too, adults on the surface of the water. Yeah. So there's got to be some nymphs moving. And usually a whitefish will take a mayfly readily, or not a mayfly, a nymph. Any Quite nymph, yeah. Any nymph. Just got to find where they're at. I think so. Well, it's a start. See, what do we got here? A little white fish, it looks like. Yeah. It's taken quite a while to actually get into the fish. I'm not sure if it's a time of day thing or. Or what? Let me just pop down here and get a good look at this little guy. Nymphing it in the faster water. When I put on it was a hair's ear mayfly nymph. And that's just see if we can get a see if I slide down here, then we'll be able to get a better look at him. There we go, pop it out. Look at him and off he goes. So I was in the faster water, maybe it's just the time of day thing. It's well, we started at 11, it's now one o'clock, so two hours to get into them, but just on the far side, a little bit faster water. Got it down deep, I got my, my weight on, and there's a good look at the nymph. I'm not sure that's gonna matter. I think as long as it warms up, the fish start to move. Put it in front of them, we should have a good day of fishing. Got him. All right. Oh. Oh, there's a nice rainbow. Came up and took that. Oh. Whoa. Well, 
sometimes you got to make the sacrifice and make the change. We are uh, we weren't having any luck with the whitefish. We thought we saw some whitefish rising down here, but we knew there'd probably be some rainbows in there too. Obviously. Whoa. So we decided to set up and they're taking a bunch of mayflies. A whole bunch of mayflies are coming off right now. Big ones. Well, oh, that's a nice little bow. Let's try to release him without hurting him. There he goes. Today on the bench, we're gonna tie you up the GP. Now the GP is a nymph that has all the main components you want in a nymph. It has the right size, real good color, and it has weight. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We're gonna tie the GP on a Mustad C49S size 10 hook. We'll use some 8 aught black thread to tie with. For the bead, we'll use a 1 8 gold tungsten. We'll use some orange pheasant rump fibers for the tail. Some burnt orange dubbing for the body. For the wing case, some olive pheasant tail, some small copper wire for the rib, white goose biots for the legs, and for the thorax we'll use some rusty brown dubbing. The first step in the fly is to take our gold bead and put it so that the small hole on the gold bead is towards the eyelet, and then tie in our black thread. I've now taken some orange pheasant rump fibers, and I'm going to put them in for the tail, but first measure up, make sure it's about the distance of the hook, about the length of the hook, and then tie them in for the tail at the hook bend. Take some medium copper wire and tie it in the back of the hook and this is going to be used to rib the wing case a little later. Take some green pheasant tail and tie it in at the back of the hook and this will be used for the wing case after we dub in the body. Take some burnt orange dubbing and dub it on your thread nice and lightly and make sure you have a nice thin amount. Nymphs do have a thin body. So dub in a thin amount of dubbing and then we're going to wrap up and form the body. And when you wrap, again keep the body fairly thin. Now that the body's dubbed in, I'm going to take my green pheasant tail and pull it forward to form a wing case. And from that I'm going to grab my copper wire and slowly pull it forward over the wing case to form about four to five ribs on the fly. Take some more green pheasant tail and tie it in for the wing case just behind the gold bead. Take two white goose bites and measure them up about the length of the hook. And these are going to be our legs and we're going to put them off the side just so the tips are pointing out so they're splayed out. Take some rusty brown dubbing and dub it onto your thread and this will be the thorax and when we wrap the thorax you want it fairly bushy because we're going to pick it out to form some more bushy like legs. So make sure you dub on fairly thick and wrap forward to form the thorax. The final step in the fly is to take our green pheasant tail and pull it forward over our thorax to form the wing case. After we whip finish the fly we're going to take it out of the out of the vise and we're just going to pick out the thorax. Pick out all the dubbing on the thorax just to give it a, a real nice bushy look. And there it is the finished GP nymph. Now when you're tying nymph patterns some important things to remember. Make sure it has the weight and make sure that matches the size and colors of the nymphs in your local waters. Just took it near the tail up. <laughs> right on. Oh, another nice rainbow. Whoa. Well, we got the drives on now. Like it's warmed up in the day. We've got a huge mayfly hat going on. Just absolutely wonderful. Amazing amount of bugs there are in this river. Midges everywhere. Yeah. Little midges everywhere. Just a, just a phenomenal hat. Oh, that's a nice oh, size. Nice bow. bow. Gotcha. Can't tell through the viewfinder. That's our little, uh, that's our nice little 12 inch variety. Oh, so I'll try to unhook him without hurting again. Barbless hooks. Try not to, try not even to touch the rainbows in here, mainly because 
We are fishing for whitefish. The whitefish are probably feeding on the dries a little further down. Yeah, you know, got to go after uh, the odd fish here and there. <laughs> the odd rainbow never hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's uh, it's open for the for the uh, what for the whitefish white fish. fishery. Yeah. And you get the odd bow here too. You get the odd bow. I'm pretty sure there's some white fish feeding in there too. I've seen a couple in there, which yeah. is why we're going after them. Well, Makes we'll keep sliding down. All the more enjoyable. Yeah. Well, today in the technology, we got Les Brazier here. Now, Les is the stewardship coordinator. I'm going to get this right for the Columbia Kootenai. Fisheries Renewal Program. Very good. Very right good. On. Right on. Well, we're at the Slocan River because that's where we're fishing today. Well, the Slocan River is full of unbelievable runs. You look at the things behind us, there should be fish everywhere, but there's not. So, how come? Well, there's a lot of, of uh, different reasons, I guess, Grant. Um, it's productive. I mean, all you got to do is grab a rock and have a look. You know, there's lots of stoneflies and mayflies, caddises in there. It's pretty awesome. But, you know, uh, the Slocan has its, has its problems, um, cumulative, um, but... Yeah. You're saying there's no, like, your analogy is no one smoking gun, no, no one major <laughs> issue. It's a, lots of different issues, and one is harvesting. Harvesting is an issue. This river is yeah. not very long. There's housing all the way along it, and so mm -hmm. the opportunity for harvesting is there. But that's yeah. just one issue. You say there are others. That it has a problem well, with temperature as well. That's right. There's there's a lot of, of uh, issues that the river has, um, and individually they're small components. But once you take them as a group, such as uh, uh, the sand, and there, there's lots of sand. You can see in the river itself that right. uh, it'll in, it'll embed the cobbles and it'll impede spawning activities uh, for multiple lots of species. Um, but no one thing is the main contributor. Uh, we have uh, high water temperatures um, than normal. What should be here? You know, some of that has to do with the fact that the large trees um, along the, the riparian zone of the river just aren't as big as they used to be, or they're not there at all. Right. Well, I say there's lots of houses all the way. A lot yeah. of people have taken them down. The riparian zone is kind of the area from the high water mark back you what, 100 yards or so. Is that yeah, the... and it's it's impacted. It's urban development. You bet. You know, people talk about the Slocan River way back when. They say, wow, it used to be great fishing. It's when we had the salmon cycle going through here, though. Yeah. Salmon cycle, I wish we could have that one back. <laughs> well, you guys got to figure that one out, how to do that. <laughs> that would be. That would be great to have the salmon back in the river. Uh, unfortunately, okay. without removing a lot of dams, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Probably not going to happen. But there are some things that you guys have got planned in order to try and enhance the fishery here. There is. There is, Grant. Um, there is a plan on the books um, as we speak that uh, for 21 structures to be placed in the river within a one kilometer area um, for research and the main focus is fish habitat, juvenile recruitment, getting those little ones to be big ones. So quite possibly within our lifetime we're going to see this river maybe flourish? It would be nice. That's that's the focus that we're at. You know, we're after is to get it. It'll, it'll never be the same as it was. Right. That's well, not doable. But to get it to its maximum capacity, what it can carry. And but you know what's really interesting from my point of view is watching groups like yourselves, who are working not only in the Slocan River but other rivers, other water systems, to learn more about fish enhancement. Being fly fishermen, I know you're an avid fly fisherman too. We'd very like to be out there fishing this river, but they also have kayakers that go out there. People like to use it for swimming in, so it's actually multi-use water. It's not just for us fly fishermen. It is. It's, it's interesting that you guys are actually taking the time to learn more about what it takes in order to have a better fishery. It is, and and it's it's a multi-use system, like you said, with kayakers and tubers and fishermen, and people just relaxing by the river. Um, but partnering with all those different groups and, and the industry to come up with a, a plan that everybody can live with is is great. And it, it's whether it's Norns Creek or or it's it's here in the, on the Slocan, it's very awesome. Well, thanks a lot. I'm glad you're putting your energies towards doing it. Thanks, Grant. And someday, maybe we're going to come out here and maybe catch some bigger fish. Some bigger fish? Yeah. Some more fish? Well, let's get back to the show and see if we come up with any more whitefish. Sounds good to me. Oh, well, gee, I tell you, I had a couple of, couple of big fish on, actually. I had one real nice rainbow on up there. I had one real nice whitefish. 
had to be close to three pounds. Didn't hang on to him. Big rainbow skied a couple times and got off. And we're just coming down that other run there. A couple more fish rising. And I gotta find out what he is. He's fighting like a rainbow. He actually jumped, I think he's a rainbow. Real neat fishery, you know, when you get something like this. It makes it really nice and really interesting. And there's a nice, another nice pretty rainbow. And that's about the average size we're getting today. I'll try to show everybody. There he is. Nice little rainbow. Not very big, but that's about the average size. We had a real nice one up above. Let him go, that water's pretty cold. And the whitefish too we were getting. We've got a real nice silver color to them in here. The Rocky Mountain whitefish, real pretty fish. And I know Groundwood got one earlier. But again, you gotta remember on the Slocan River, it is whitefish only up until April 15th. And if you happen to get other species, like we're getting some rainbows today, make sure you let them go. And a real good thing to use out here, even if you're going for whitefish, when you're nymphing or dry fly, use a barbell suck. That way you can release the other fish unharmed. So we got some whitefish rising, we got some rainbows rising. It seems like the rainbows were getting more to yeah. take rainbow takes than we are whitefish Although takes. Although uh, last one I had on was a whitefish and then this rainbow came up and, and grabbed it. But there's quite a few starting more and more starting to come on with the uh, with the hatch intensifying. Well, you they, know, we were wondering, we floated through some awesome water this morning, not a sniff. And then it started about one o'clock, got one on the nymph. And oh, then what time is it now? It's quarter to three. It was about half an hour ago. They just started to turn on. Yeah, and it's and all amazing. of a sudden they, they just came out of the weeds. Actually, you know where they're sitting is in the deeper holes, it seems like. And they're just starting to make their way out. Yeah, and it's starting to get some nice action too, because uh, before we tried nymphing and we tried yeah. a bunch of different ways to get it, and then we saw some yeah. rising, and now it's turned out to be a pretty good. We thought it was going to be actually a pretty poor day. Yeah. Now it could turn out really well. I'm surprised the number of rainbows that we're getting. We're getting way more rainbows than we are whitefish. I think the, the rises too, there's more rainbows than whitefish. Yeah, that's probably why the, the rainbows are more free rising, I think, than the whitefish. But yeah, maybe as the day goes on, we'll get back into some more whitefish. Okay, let's go get to well, I'm going back up with you yeah. and floating through this whole segment and <laughs> section here. Wow. All right. Another fish, they've really come on now. And what I'm doing is I'm using a sink tip line. I'm actually just nymphing with the sink tip. With what they'd call a stone bugger on here. It looks just like a half woolly bugger, half stone fly. All right. And oh, they're bad, nice eh? sized fish. Yeah, I'm just nymphing with it. So I got a chance for both the rainbows and the. Oh, right on. Beautiful fish. Nice fish. That's a nice healthy bull. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice rainbow, nice yeah. colors. Yeah, and he took it just like a nymph. It was just drifting, free floating. Yeah. He picked it up just like the whitefish, just grabbed onto it. Now you're saying that the whitefish really like that in the Bull River system. Yeah, the upper Bull River system. <clears throat> they tend to really go after when we're fishing for the browns a lot of times. We'll just be free floating the bugger and they'll take it just like a stonefly nymph. So that's where you're doing. You got a, what, do you, what rig do you have on? You got a sink tip? I got the eight weight sink tip so I get right okay. down. Piece of fluorocarbon about four feet long and a bugger or a stonefly nymph. Yeah, and that's Works one fine. thing you got to remember too when you're going for the whitefish, make sure you get it to the bottom. I mean, uh, most of the fish that are hanging out, the rainbows like to be a little higher, but those whitefish are right on the bottom, and that's where you're trying to bottom down. Well, just like the sign said at the start of the show, close for fishing for good reason. Well, yeah, it was pretty tough. You know, we, we went after the whitefish pretty hard, tried nymphing them, but. No luck. You know, I was surprised. I really thought, since I had it open for whitefish, yeah. that there was going to be lots of whitefish to be had, but there weren't one. Yeah, one, one whitefish man, I had one on the drive, but you know what I think it is? Every fish that we caught were in those deep holes, and yeah. I don't think they've come out of their wintering holes yet. Oh, could be. Yeah, I really don't think so, because every one, there was like 20-foot holes, and there were only fish that were coming up, and you happened to nymph that one up. Right. We didn't get one other on the nymph. Yeah, we didn't show much of the fishing that we did oh. today, but we really flogged it hard today. Lots two, of nymphing. Yeah, two rods set up with nymphs and that, changing yeah. up different patterns, and yeah, we couldn't get them. It's just a good thing. It was a nice day. We had all the yeah. mayflies coming off, and we were able to get some dry fly action. And 
You know what? Imagine if this river was full of cutthroats. Oh, that would be sweet. That's what it. It, it could would be, be a world class river. Yeah, it, it could, could be. be. I'd like to thank Dale for coming along and catching some fish. Yeah, he always does. Out. Yeah, He's always yeah. help put the show together. Yeah, for sure. You get a chance to come out to the this river. Well, make sure it's March first, April fifteenth. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but make sure you take care and conserve the waters. You know, they they got the right management on this river. They just need the fish now. Yeah, it'll happen, hopefully I in our so. lifetime. Yeah. yeah. See you next time. When we take you spore fishing on the fly.